Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Thank you so much for um, stopping on my channel. I have a word today. Um, what I want to speak today is on unforgiveness and bitterness, anger, um, all of these emotions that we all experience um, sometimes. And for a lot of people, um, it can be something that many of you all have been dealing with for a while and maybe this emotion has taken root in your heart and I'm really believing today for freedom who's ever watching this video because it's not God's will for you to carry this weight and so I believe the key thing in overcoming any sort of I said if <laughs> of um, bitterness anger any frustration is really understanding you know who God is who you are in him and you know why he says the things that he does and so before I say anything I just want to go ahead and just invite the Holy Spirit Heavenly Father God I just come before you now Lord um, in the name of Jesus and I just thank you for this time God I just pray today for freedom I pray for the people who are listening to this video, God, that, Father, they would receive the truth of your word concerning these emotions, God, that we all experience. Um, it's not easy, but freedom is possible through Christ. And so, God, I just pray that now that you would speak through me and that your word, Father, would go forth and it would minister to the hearts of these ones listening. I ask all of this now in the name of Jesus. Amen. What I want to speak on today is, you know, really why one deals with these emotions. And so the key to understanding, um, first of all, let's talk about unforgiveness, is really, um, you know, something happened to us in a relationship and, you know, something that they did, you know, to us or to someone else, it really hurt us, you know, it really offended us and, you know, we took it to heart. And so now we're left with this wound. We're left with, you know, this feeling of almost just, I know for a lot of people, it's like when we're hurt, you know, we don't want to speak to that person. Um, a lot of the times, you know, a lot of people just cut people off. Um, because, you know, the person, um, that, you know, hurt them, you know, um, they just really don't want anything to, to do with them. And I completely, I, I know how that feels. Um, but when we start to understand, you know, we don't live in a perfect world. You know, we know that people will oftentimes say things to us whether knowingly or unknowingly and you know it will trigger some emotions in us and a lot of the times too it it can take us back to like an old memory and it causes us to remember certain things that we don't want to remember you know and so what I want to speak on is how to really overcome anger how to overcome bitterness how to you know, be a forgiving person. Because I want to say a lot of the times from what I hear from people is, you know, I don't, I can't forgive this person, you know. Um, I just can't, right? That's what a lot of people say. And I will be honest, um, if we look at it through our natural eyes, right, in our, in our feelings and our emotions, we're not going to want to forgive people because people naturally you know, they'll say, well, they have to, they have to come and apologize. Well, what if that apology never comes? What if I told you that it's so possible to not need an apology? What if it really is as simple as you trusting God, that he is God, and that the word of God says vengeance belongs to God? And so if you are his child, we know that the Bible said God causes all things to work for good together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So trusting that God knows your situation, trusting that God 
you know, as you pray that he's going to move on behalf of this person, Father, soften their heart. You know, show them, God, what they did was wrong. And and I want to share with you what I do. You know, if, if someone hurts me, if someone offends me, you know, I can sit there and I can think about it. You know, okay, you know, this person did this to me. But what I do is I simply say, Father, I just, I release this person to you. And Father, I, I just give this to you. And what's so amazing to me about this is that the feeling of relief you know, it comes after the, after the obedience, you know, because, um, you know, for Christians, you know, um, the Bible tells us, you know, forgive if you want to be forgiven. You know, if we've accepted the Christ and all that he's come to do on this earth for us, we have to accept, you know, the price that we have to pay. And people will at times slander us. People at times will say all sorts of evil things about us, but it's not for us to take it personally. Just like Jesus on the cross where he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And so a lot of the times people won't realize that. Remember the words of Christ. Forgive them for they know not what they do. You know, instead of taking it personally, maybe another way that you can see it is, and biblically is there is an enemy who's after us and that's Satan and he hates us and he wants nothing more than to cause division between you and your family you and your best friend he wants all of that he doesn't want you to experience the abundant life because Jesus said I have come that they may have life and life and abundantly and then the verse right after it says but this but the thief comes to steal kill and destroy and so when we know that we have an enemy who was looking for any opportunity to come into our lives, to steal that joy, to steal that peace, we have to be on guard. And so I want to share with you um, a couple of scriptures that are very fitting, um, you know, for these things. So Ephesians chapter 4 verses 26 through 27, it says, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give the place to the devil. So, you know, there's really nothing wrong with being angry. I totally, I get angry sometimes too, you know, um, but it's processing our anger and again, not sinning in our anger. It's ultimately being able to feel what you feel you know, but not sinning in your anger. And, you know, it says, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Because what happens is if you don't deal with that anger, you know, you now are opening a door to the enemy to come in. That's what it says. It says, neither give place to the devil. I love the uh, the passion translation. It says, but don't let the passion of your emotions lead you to sin. Don't let anger control you or be fuel for revenge for not even a day. And this is where, you know, as Christians, we have to really um, take our thoughts captive, right? Have our mind in control. We are not allowing our mind and our thoughts to get the best of us, like, we tell our thoughts, you know, where we're going to go. We're not going to allow our thoughts to just free roam, right? And so um, we are not to be led by our emotions. It's okay to feel our emotions, but we really have to be led by the Spirit of God. And, you know, that's where the true freedom comes as we're being led by the Holy Spirit as we are in submission to his will which is his word right and so i just want to share with you that if you struggle with any of these things if you struggle with anger if you struggle with bitterness and unforgiveness you know the key is really love it's first receiving the father's love his love for you how much he loves you and i want to tell you when you know how much god loves you and it's not a knowing in your head. The love I'm talking about is a knowing 
the, the love that Jesus said to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge is this deep knowing that you are loved by God. And when you know that you're loved by God, you know, you can trust him. You know, you can trust what he's asking you to do to release these things because what it is, it's just like a weight. It's like a, a big weight on your shoulder. So, you know, abide in his love. And, you know, know, right, that, that God is love. And first you have to receive his love in order to give his love because we can't give something we don't have. And so um, that's something to, you know, to remember, you know, as you abide in the love of God, he will give you the grace to, to do these things. And it's not easy, but I can truly say that once you begin to practice these things and you see it as an act of obedience rather than an emotion, rather than them seeing that they deserve your forgiveness, why don't you just see it the way that God sees it you know how much has God pardoned us he's forgiven us a lot and so God wants us to have that same heart posture in forgiving others that they don't deserve it but because we are children of God we want to do what's right and I want to get into um the chapter of love which is first Corinthians chapter 13 and i i love this this chapter because it just says so much it says so much on you know all these things that i'll i'll go ahead and read it uh we'll be starting in chapter 13 starting verse 1 it says if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, and it is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant, it does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, it is not provoked, it does not take into account a wrong suffered, it does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, it bears all things, believes all things, and hopes all things. And it endures all things. Love never fails. But if there are gifts of prophecy, there will be, they will be done away with. If there are tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, it will be done away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child. When and excuse me think like a child reason like a child when i became a man i did away with childish things but for now we see in a mirror dimly but the face of but face to face now i know in part but then i will be fully known just as i have been fully known but now faith hope and love abide these three but the greatest of this is love what i love about this chapter you know, it says that love endures all things. When you are operating in love, the love that Christ gives us through his power, not our own, you can do anything. You can forgive the grievous offense. And it's not easy, but you know, like it says, love doesn't take in a, into account a wrong suffered. And 
you know, honestly, God does take us through a process. This is not something that I'm even saying like, like right away, you know, but if we do these things, if we begin to change our habits in our relationships, you know, when, when things happen, when people say things to us, you know, we can overcome these things, these emotions by the word of God, because the word of God, it says that it's a, the sword of the spirit. And so it, it cuts, you know, even to the division of soul and sparrow. What does that mean? It means that the word of God, you know, spiritually speaking, when we apply it, you know, it cuts to our heart to the nitty gritty of who we are because everything comes from our heart. You know, our emotions, our will, it's all intertwined. And I wanna say too, if there's somebody from your past, someone who maybe did really horrible things to you, maybe this person you know, I mean, just did really hurtful things to you, whether emotionally, physically. You know, I'm here to tell you today that God wants to heal you. And you don't have to live with that pain anymore. God doesn't desire that you carry that that poison, that it literally, it defiles us. And he wants to free you from that. He wants to free you from what they did to you. And there's nothing greater than allowing God to just heal us so that we can be whole, so that we can truly love others and receive love as well. And so I just, I hope and pray that, you know, you will have a new perspective today, seeing things through the word of God. And for us as Christians, we know that we, we must do these things. And I think a lot of the times, you know, we don't do things because we don't feel like it. But if we start truly obeying the word, we're going to see the fruit. We're going to see the joy. We're going to see the peace. And you're going to be a testimony. You're not going to be walking around anymore just sad and, you know, all these things. You're going to be free. Hallelujah, because that's the price that Jesus Christ paid for us, was to have that abundant life, not a mediocre life, not a life of pain, of sorrow. You know, yes, he told us these things would come about because we're his disciples, but we don't have to live in this, in this, in this way. And so I pray that today, whoever is watching this, that if you do struggle with these things, I want to let you know God is trustworthy. You can trust him that he knows best. If he's saying to forgive and let it go, give it to him. There is nothing that you're missing out by holding on to these things. Trust that God will work out everything for your good. One of my favorite scriptures, it says that the Lord, you know, works out everything that concerns me. He really does. The Lord perfects everything that concerns you. So be blessed, be encouraged. And I just hope that, you know, you will begin and learn to trust God as a faithful God, as a faithful friend.
God bless you.